To learn more about Next Level Sound's online music production courses, please visit nextlevelsound.com. Let's talk about reverb for a second. Um, what is what is what is reverb? It's the space. Yeah, it is the space. It's the space and its sizes of space. It is. Um, is reverb a delay-based effect? Is it based in delay? Yes, it is. Exactly. It is. 100%. And it's time-based. Exactly. Exactly. So I always describe reverb as, as a bag of ping pong balls, a loose, flimsy plastic bag that breaks easily, and that you throw this bag against the back wall of a room and it hits that back wall and then it the bag breaks open and these ping pong balls start scattering all over the room and the 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 sound of the ping pong balls hitting the walls and also colliding with each other is the sound of reverb and the sound of these ping pong balls bouncing around is the sound of reverb. So reverb is a cloud of irregular delays. And it takes an original sound source and it scatters it up and breaks it up, right? And so this, the, the way the sound of these ping pong balls and the way that they interact is going to be absolutely a function of the size of the room, the height of the ceiling, the design of the walls, the materials of the walls, whether there's a carpet or a hardwood floor. And so this gives us a sense of where we are in a very animalistic sense. I used to work in New York City uh, for many, 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 many years. And I used to see blind people walking around New York City. And it always blew my mind that they had the courage to live in such a hectic, you know, often dangerous city. And some of them had walking sticks and some of them had dogs to help them or people to help them. But they navigated the city. They left their apartments. They went down elevators. They went out hallways. They walked down streets they turned left they turned right and they navigated without their sight so what were they using you know these definitely they were using these aids but they were using their hearing to see how close they were to the street how cl close they were to a wall how crowded a space was how empty the space was and they're using reverb Right? They they weren't thinking about it. They weren't gonna they didn't wake up in the morning and say, I'm gonna use reverb to go to the market and get my groceries. They just got up and went. But they were using reverb. And even though we have our site, most of us, many of us, we still use reverb in the same way as animals to locate ourselves. You know if you're in a narrow hallway or an elevator or a foyer, right? Or a huge Walmart or a small car or an airplane. You know where you are by the reverb. So when we as producers, engineers, mixers, all the above, when we use reverb, we're telling people where they are. It's one of the most powerful things that we do when we're mixing is to be able to tell people where they are. And reverb and compression were always the two hardest things for me, for sure. They were just mystical and confusing. There was too much information. None of it agreed with itself. And um, it's funny, I had a, a, a mixing partner who was a guitarist and I was a drummer. And guitarists are really good with effects. I think because they always you play with effects pedals and amps their whole life and they they're really good with effects and good with reverb for some reason right and i was good with eq and saturation and compression and arranging and we mix a lot of stuff together and then he moved back to california and i stayed in new york 
but I kept the New York clients. This was before the internet. No, it was when the internet was little. And so I had to, they were like, yes, make us a mix like you did two months ago. And this guy was gone. And I had to kind of teach myself reverb all over again because I was lazy. He'd start doing reverb and I'd go out to lunch and I'd come back and it sounded perfect and that's all I needed to know. So, so it was one of those things that I had to kind of figure out very um, much on the fly and very quickly. And I kind of had this little run where I, I didn't have to, you know, understand it, but, but, but it made me figure it out so that I could even use it the way I wanted to and teach it. And it was, it ultimately is a happy story, but it's difficult for people. It's confusing to people reverb. You know, what is a plate? What is a hall? What's a diff- what's a room? What's the difference between a u- room and a hall? What's, a, what's a chamber? What's an ambience reverb? You know, why do we care? Why do we have all these different reverbs? Um, when do I use them? Can reverbs, can I have two reverbs on the same thing? How do I set them up? All these questions, you know, about reverb. So, but, but, but I want reverb to be really fun for you. I want you to wake up and want to put reverb on things because you get to tell the listener, you know, where you get to locate them. So I always say that there's two kinds of movies in the world. One is a realistic movie that could have happened. One is a science fiction movie that probably couldn't have happened, you know. One is a movie where a guy meets a girl in a supermarket and he likes her and then he gets the courage to ask her out and she invites him over and he opens the window and the cat escapes and he doesn't want to let her know and he finds the cat and, you know. These kinds of things, this is a real movie and it really could have happened and it really entertains people and people go to see that movie and they love it. So that's one kind of movie, a movie that could have happened. Another kind of movie is, you know, you wake up in a flying through space in a pod and you have a time machine that you have to fly back to to save the world and you have a chip embedded in your wrist or something. I don't know. And that probably doesn't happen to most people on a typical day. But it's a real kind of movie and people really go to that movie and they enjoy that movie. Now, in music or audio, whatever we want to call this, let's call it music, we also have two kinds of movies. We have jazz and classical music and even unplugged rock music and different things where the recording engineer producer wants to make it as realistic as possible. They want you to really feel like you were really there at Carnegie Hall when Adele with her piano player sang with piano and vocal and that you were there. And that's the kind of movie where the guy let the cat out the window and they have to find the cat and all that stuff. This really could have happened. You're not really there. No, it's a reproduction. And they use reverb to make it real sound as though you had a perfect seat on a perfect night in Carnegie Hall. That's the aesthetic they're going for for that movie, a realistic movie. Then there's another kind of, you know, music production, especially electronic, but all kinds of music and organic as well, where the engineer, the mixer, the producer is not worried about realism. They're they're just worried about or not worried about, but they're just trying to achieve entertainment. They're trying to entertain you. So it's not like you're going to pick one reverb, the Carnegie Hall reverb, and the entire five-minute piece is going to stay within that reverb. You might have multiple reverbs. You might go from a claustrophobic corridor to a large open space, and then back to a corridor. They may play with the sense of space across the five minute piece, and that may entertain you. That it never could have happened. Like flying through space in a pod. I guess you can fly through space in a pod these days, but you know what I'm saying. Maybe not with the time machine and the chip to save the world, right? So depending on the kind of music that you make, you're gonna use your reverbs differently. And you might do both. You know, in your careers, you might do some realistic movies and some science fiction movies, or both, or combine them, or whatever. That's up to you. It's up to you. So we're going to look a little bit at both, you know, both approaches and also how they sort of 
can coexist as well. All right. To learn more about Next Level Sound's online music production courses, please visit nextlevelsound.com.